at the great plan of God for men and we have seen that all of God's plan for man is summarized in the word salvation God wants everybody to be saved the God's plan for man is expressed in another word called grace God desires for man to be saved so he not only desired he went ahead to make the enablement available for mankind first timothy chapter 2 verse number 3 as we begin tonight read for me for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior this is good and acceptable in the sight of god of our savior what is good verse 4 who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth he will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth so god desires that all men be saved the scripture tells us he's not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering not willing that any soul should perish but that all should come to repentance god didn't plan for any soul to perish when we began to study you know uh, the foreknowledge of god the predestination and the election we saw that all of that is god's plan for all of mankind in christ jesus the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 tells us in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will and we said that the counsel of his will is salvation god did not plan any man for destruction nobody nobody including the atheists who says there is no god god has them inclusive in his plan of salvation god doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked we saw that in ezekiel god does not take pleasure in the death of the sinner that's why he's long suffering not willing that any soul should perish but that all shall come to repentance that brings us to the will of god in salvation the role of god and the role of man in salvation the role of god and the role of man in salvation well the truth is that god plays the a to z role in salvation god plays the a to z role in salvation he is sovereign and we are studying the bible to see that all of god's sovereignty is revealed in the light of christ so the role of god is salvation the role of god's sovereignty is in salvation nobody dictates to god god doesn't react nobody dictates to god nobody tells god what to do and at the same time god doesn't react he doesn't get angry god doesn't react he doesn't get angry circumstances don't make god do something no that there are situations doesn't make god do something because if god will do something because there's a situation it means he's reacting it means he's reacting it is not because you have a problem that god will do something if god is doing something because you have a problem then it means he is not god that means that problem uh, took him by surprise but god doesn't react god doesn't get angry before the need arise he had made provision on mount moriah on mount moriah abraham said the lord shall provide himself the lord shall provide himself that means the provision of the lord is himself Hibananka the lord shall provide himself that is why all of god's promises and all of god's blessings are in him in him everything god will do is in christ he does not react he is never late he is not in a hurry he's in charge nothing takes him by surprise nothing takes him by chance that's why he is god He's omniscient. He, he has foreknowledge. He sees ahead of time. And in his predestined plan, he has already taken care of the matter before the matter arrived. I'm teaching here. He doesn't react. So he does not do something because of a situation. Before that situation was ever conceived, 
he had already done it abraham said to the to the young lad the lord shall provide because the young lad said father we see the wood we see the the, the fire where is the lamb he said the lord will provide himself the lord will provide himself because it was a type of of, of the of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ the lord shall provide himself and when they got to mount moriah the lord provided himself oh yes don't touch that boy take him off uh, what, what, what benefit will i get in killing isaac isaac is just a type look there there's a ram cut up by the thick of the horns take that put on the altar and, and the bible said we brethren as isaac was we are so isaac was to die we were to die and the ram showed up which was jesus coming to take our place that's why jesus said abraham saw my days and he was glad when did abraham see the days of jesus on mount moriah at the place of the substitutionary sacrifice the lord shall provide himself nothing takes god by chance your healing is not going to happen your healing already happened you are only coming to find out about it jesus is not going to die again to heal that one death took care of the woes of humanity that one death took care of all of all of the problems that a man will ever face that one death your salvation was provided in that death your health was taken care of in that death remember sin entered into the world and death by sin so when the root of death has been dealt with then the branches that came with death will either sickness disease and all of human depravity are branches of sin until sin came into the world there was no death in the world we see what god created god's creation of this planet in chapter genesis chapter 1 uh, the bible tells us in genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and god saw everything that he has created and that it was very good sickness is not very good disease is not very good poverty is not very good ahead of time god already provided himself god is not going to bless you he hath blessed you so there's nothing god is going to do anymore he has already done all in christ jesus is the fulfillment of all things in luke chapter 24 verse 25 he looked at those disciples of his on the way to Emmaus, and he said to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken what has the prophet spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory talking about the prophets of the old testament this was the message of the prophets of the old testament that the christ will suffer and out of his suffering glory will follow all right and then beginning from moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself verse 44 and he said unto them these are the words which i spake unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled i am the fulfillment of all things all the promises of god all the blessings of god all the goodness of god all the favor of god all the mercy of god all the grace of god packaged in a man called jesus the fulfillment of all of god's promises so all the promises of god are in him in him when you have him you have all of god's promises fulfilled when you have him jesus you have all of god's promises fulfilled ah, paul, paul paul speaking to the church at corinth he says sylvanus and i we didn't tell you that god's promises are yea and nay they are not yea and nay there's nothing like sometimes when you pray god says yes and some other times god says no 
and some other times God says wait there's no such thing in the scriptures all the promises of God are in him yes there's no no in Christ there's no no yes means fulfilled that's the meaning of yes all the promises of God in him are fulfilled glory to God oh not some of them all the promises of God in him yes amen fulfilled Jesus is the amen of God everything God said Jesus says amen to it fulfilled Jesus is the fulfillment of everything all of it fulfilled in christ everything all of god's plan for mankind fulfilled where in christ and where is christ in you christ in you god is not going to god has you didn't hear that god is not going to god has didn't brother peter give us an insight into that he had given unto us whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you escape the corruption that is in the world through loss and he hath given unto us he hath he hath given unto us all things that pertain all things he hath he hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge through the knowledge god is not going to god has already done but you take you take delivery of what has been done through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue we are not called to shame we are not called to disgrace we are called to glory and virtue Christ in you, the hope of glory. No shame. Lift your right hand and shout, all things are mine. Say it louder, all things are mine. Loudest, all things are mine. Say, I'm not the needy. I'm the supplied for. You know, Brother Hagin, Brother Hagin, told the story of how God healed him. He got healed from that sick bed. Walked out of that sick bed. And the devil came back to him with symptoms of that paralysis. That is what people say you need deliverance. No. No. He said when the devil came back to him with the symptoms of the paralysis, he was in the toilet. I heard him tell this. And the devil whispered to his ears, the sickness is back. And this time around, you will not be healed. So he started laughing. Ha 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 he laughed until the devil said why are you laughing <laughs> oh, <laughs> your landlord said if you don't pay your rent i'll throw you out <laughs> he will get afraid because normal people don't behave like that <laughs> it's time for the church to laugh it's time for God's people to laugh. These are the days of laughter. <laughs> Look at the problem and start laughing. Look at the challenge and start laughing. Look at the situation and begin to laugh. You know why you're laughing? You know better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> glory, glory, glory. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I feel this thing. <laughs> he said, I never said to him, Why are you laughing? 
then he started laughing again <laughs> because that means i've gotten the devil's attention so after laughing for a while he said i'm laughing because i don't need healing then he started laughing again <laughs> then he stopped he said i have it i'm not looking for it i don't even want to be healed i don't want it i'm not looking for it i'm not in need of it i was healed he said the symptoms just vanished instant fear the symptoms disappeared that was the end <laughs> oh my goodness now see let me talk to you Simit Wigglesworth the apostle of faith <laughs> told the story of how one night God's people must come to knowledge hey, yeah, 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 yeah. you know I'm just imagining uh, you know the, the way this revolution is going on all over the world I'm just imagining all over the world millions are literally following these teachings i'm imagining a generation of millions of people all over the world who come face to face with the revelation of jesus do you know what will happen to this planet can you imagine everywhere people walking in knowledge people walking in revelation everywhere jesus is just all over the place hey 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 hey, hey! That's why they are afraid but their fear has come on them and you didn't hear me that's why they are afraid but their fear has come on them this is the day of jesus christ this is the day of jesus christ but above all this is the day of jesus and his sons jesus and his brothers where are the brothers somebody shout revelation shout it again revelation louder revelation loudest revelation <laughs> glory to god please sit down and listen see me to Goldsworth. said he was sleeping up in the room upstairs and he had noise in the sitting room downstairs it was like a, a story building up there the noise became increasingly much so he took the hurricane lamp and peeped from the balcony into the sitting area and saw a creature sitting with two horns downstairs so Simit Ugosword looked at him and said Is it you when you finish put the room the way you met it before you get out good night got back on his bed and slept woke up the next day the room is back to the way it was not a prayer they that know their God God doesn't react. Please, that's very important. God does not react. There is nothing God is going to do for you anymore. He has already done it in Christ. He that spared not his son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All the promises of God are in him yes and amen hallelujah hallelujah i said hallelujah god doesn't get angry god doesn't react why he knows everything the fact that he knows everything doesn't mean he, he is in control of everything. He knows everything. But he is not in control of everything. But he has taken care of everything. He
He knows everything. He is not in control of everything. But he has taken care of everything. We are in Christ. You heard that. He knows everything. He is not in control of everything. And you will soon understand what, I'm, what I mean. But he has taken care of everything. The day God reacts, he is no more God. That means something took him by surprise. He only woke up late to realize it has happened. Then he started making an emergency plan. God's anger refers to man's action. Anytime you hear God's anger, it is in reference to man's action. Because God's anger is part of the plan man made. So in God's anger, the expression of God's anger is mercy. The expression of God's anger towards men for their choices and action is mercy. Look at the fall of man. God's expression to that fall was mercy. He comes by Moses' vision. Adam, where are thou? It's not like he didn't know where Adam was. He was, just, he was just calling Adam's attention to the fact that where you're supposed to be, you have left it. Where are thou? He said, I'm naked. Who told you? The woman you gave me. This guy just messed up all of God's plan for mankind. This man just messed up everything for mankind, not for himself alone. You will think God will land Adam a clean slab, take off one side of his face before they start talking. God says to Adam, come out, took away the leaves, got an animal, killed the animal, skinned the animal, and covered his nakedness. That's a loving father. God's anger towards man is mercy. That's the expression. It's mercy. How long does his mercy endure? Exactly. Remember I told you. God does not tolerate sin. God does not inspire sin. God does not tempt with sin. So what does God do to sin? He punishes sin. Where does he punish it? On himself. The sin of man. God is not responsible. But because he is God. He, he has decided. To express against that sin his anger but to us man that anger is mercy you're not hearing me are you understanding yes, yeah the mercy of god thank you jesus the mercy of god the mercy of god he grants rescue to man and what people call the anger or the day of vengeance today is a fallacy. Today is not the day of vengeance. Today is not the day of vengeance. Isaiah 61 from verse 1. Let's go. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings. This is a mission statement of Jesus in prophecy. And remember, Jesus did everything and operated according as it was written so this was a prophecy all right read on that prophecy good tidings unto the meek yes he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted yes to proclaim liberty to the captives yes so liberty to the captives is a proclamation it's not a prayer you don't pray deliverance prayer deliverance is a preaching because deliverance is preached so that man will believe and be saved 
salvation is deliverance <laughs> you know i was just thinking about this people don't read their bibles honey you know they don't read their bibles i was just walking down this the, the, the corridor in the house just on the way to the car then the holy ghost called my attention to this all these deliverance ministers and ministries that claim they are doing deliverance which scripture says that man is the deliverer no scripture beginning from the shadows to the substance ever attributed deliverance to man no man can deliver another man i'll show you put your finger in isaiah 61 flip to exodus 6 6 let's see the shadow concerning deliverance wherefore say unto the children of israel i am the lord and i will bring you out i i the lord will bring you out from under the bodies of the egyptians which is sin which is a type of sin i will read you out of their bondage and i will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment and i will take you to me for a people and i will be to you a god and you shall know that i am the lord your god which bringeth you out out salvation out from under the burdens of the egyptians next verse and i will bring you in unto deliverance movement from out into out of darkness into light who is the deliverer god now come with me to the fulfillment colossians 1 12 giving thanks unto who the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints where in light this father it is he who hath delivered who is the deliverer the father the father somebody said but it was moses that went and told pharaoh let my people go it is a man of god that goes to tell people your sins have been paid for when they believe that message jesus delivers i'm teaching here but when he came to casting devils out he said this sign shall follow you that believe in my name you shall cast out but for deliverance he is the deliverer but for casting demons out it is one of the elements in the id card of a believer that as you're walking as a believer part of your id card is anywhere demons are making noise out 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 but when it comes to deliverance giving thanks to the father who had delivered us isaiah 61 put up verse 2 for me read on to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord yes and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all that mourn. verse 3 to appoint unto them now, that i mourn. need your intelligent smart self awake now yes to appoint unto them that mourn in zion yes to give unto them beauty for ashes yes the oil of joy for mourning yes the garments of praise for the spirits of heaviness yes that they might be called trees of righteousness yes the planting of the lord that he might be glorified next verse and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations now go back to verse one because i want everybody to see where i'm looking for to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound to to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god the day of vengeance of our god part of the mission statement of jesus look 
Luke 4 17 Jesus now shows up and he now begins to interpret the prophecy of the prophets Luke 4 17 read for me and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written read on the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yes. To preach deliverance to, to the captives. To do what? What do we do to the captives? We preach. We don't pray. Deliverance is not a prayer. Deliverance is not a service. Deliverance is not a fasting. Deliverance it's not a ministry there is nothing like the ministry of deliverance there is nothing like the ministry of the it is nowhere in the bible genesis to revelation there is no such ministry deliverance is the father's responsibility In the ministries that Jesus gave to the church, there's nothing like deliverance. What ministries did he give to the church? Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the... There's nothing like the ministry of deliverance. It is human contribution to the work of salvation. Which is an insult on the finished work of grace. There's nothing like that. Are you still here? No, 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 To preach what? So deliverance is a preaching. It is called the word of faith, which we preach. It is called the forgiveness of sins. Unto you, the forgiveness of sin is preached. Acts 13 38. We will come back to look for. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you what? The forgiveness of sins to preach deliverance. What is deliverance? The preaching of the forgiveness of sins. It's called the word of faith. It's called the word of faith. Now come back to that Luke chapter 4. Give me 18. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Next verse. And he closed the book something is missing what is missing that is not the ministry of jesus today that's why he closed the book it's nothing like vengeance service service of vengeance oil of vengeance is fraud it's fraud it's calm jesus close the book there's nothing like oil of vengeance there's nothing like water of vengeance there's nothing like mantle of vengeance it's fraud jesus whom the prophecy was concerning the fulfillment of the prophecy close the book put it back let me finish it he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him watch the next thing he said and he began to say to them this day is this scripture which scripture isaiah 61 1 to 3 minus vengeance is fulfilled It's not the day of vengeance. When is the day of vengeance? The end of the age. 
today is the day of salvation you cannot have vengeance at the same time with salvation today is the acceptable time you can't have vengeance at the acceptable time he closed the book and he told them this day the fulfillment of this scripture is here and jesus is the fulfillment of all things i'm teaching now if you understand it shout i hear you there are people who are not happy with what i'm preaching but none of them called me none of them called me there are two things you cannot take away from me number one you cannot tell me what to preach because you didn't call me you didn't send me i'm not working for you you don't pay my salary and you don't take care of me so i'm not i'm not accountable to you i'm only accountable to the one who died for me then number two you cannot decide who will hear me nobody can decide who will hear me nobody can control those that hear me so leave that in two things you can't tell me what to preach number two you can't determine who listens to me am i communicating yes even in the house of a man that doesn't like me his wife is hiding in the bedroom watching his children are hiding in the toilet watching you can't determine who will hear me you can't decide who will hear us people are in the toilet with their phones with their headphones so you won't even know they're hearing they are watching except they don't have the holy ghost anybody that have the holy ghost when he hears the truth the spirit of god will be a witness he will know that i may not understand what this man is saying but this thing is true because likewise the spirit itself also bear it witness with our spirit there's a witness of the spirit except you are not born of god except you are not born of god even when you are fighting me if you are really born of god inside you you will lack strength to fight you will only do open eye but inside you you know in your consciousness that this thing sounds true it may not be what i've been doing but it sounds true i may have to humble myself and learn jesus is the explanation of all things thank you lord hey jesus didn't mention vengeance at all because it's not the day we are in the seventh day honey on the seventh day god rested you can't be resting and doing vengeance <laughs> apostle gift do you rest with god in your hand have you ever seen anybody that say i want to rest then as he lied down he carries cutlass is that rest no that is stress god cannot be resting and be doing vengeance no he he is resting this is the seventh day this is the acceptable time this is the day of salvation god is not looking for to destroy people he is long suffering not willing that any should perish no matter what they do he is long suffering and when he is angry he releases mercy what you're hearing tonight is the gospel this is the seventh day the day of the church the day of grace hallelujah hallelujah john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life next verse 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Next verse. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So that condemnation is not a state. That condemnation is not a state. It's a result of not believing. That condemnation is not a man's state. It is the resultant effect of not believing. That means even in that condemnation, that man still has a chance to believe. That's why it's not a state. That condemnation is not a state. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, you know the sovereignty of God means God does as he pleases. Can we know what God pleases? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. God and his word are one. So if you want to know what God pleases, look at his word. The word of God reveals the pleasure of God. Because God and his word are one. So the word of God is not an effect of a reaction. The word of God is not an effect of a reaction. Why? Forever, O oh God, thy word is is settled it's not a reaction the word of god is not an effect of a reaction it's been settled before things happen why because god and his word are one in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word is god so the word of god is not an effect of a reaction because the word of god is settled it doesn't change with time that is his sovereignty the world doesn't change with time even when times change the world is the same why it has an eternal solution to changing times the world has an eternal solution to changing times before the times change the word of god has already been designed in such a way that it has accommodated all the changes of the time ahead of time and provided solution for those changing times so the word of god does not begin to adjust because times have changed no the word of god has within its capacity the capability and the ability to accommodate the changing times with solutions that were predated before the times change solutions that were eternally prepared before the times change so the word of god is a settled matter it doesn't change with time it changes times to fit in to what it was predicted to accomplish before your body broke down with sickness healing has been on the table solution came before problem God doesn't react. Are you getting blessed? If you're getting blessed, short, I'm getting blessed. Nothing dictates to the word of God. Nothing dictates to the word. And the good news is, the word is not just a book. The word is a person. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was in God. The word was God. Verse 14. And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The word is not just a book. The word is beyond the book. The word is a person. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. As the glory of the father. Full of grace and truth. Of his. His. The person. The person of the word. Of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. The word of God is beyond a book. The word of God is a person. Religion terminates in a book. 
Christianity goes beyond the book to meet the person. Religion ends with the book. But Christianity takes you beyond the book to encounter his person. Religion is a compilation of rhymes. A compilation of rhymes. Old wife fables. That's where religion ends. But Christianity goes beyond the book to meet the person. This is serious tonight. Christ is his word. So we can only understand the sovereign nature of God's sovereignty through Jesus. We can only understand the sovereign nature of God's sovereignty through Jesus. Not through individual experiences. But we look at Jesus Christ as the sovereignty of God explained. We look at Jesus Christ as the sovereignty of God explained. The Old Testament deals with individuals. The New Testament deals with Jesus. Hey. The Old Testament deals with individuals. The New Testament deals with Jesus. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He spoke to individuals. In time past, he spoke to individuals. The Old Testament deals with individuals. He spoke to the fathers. Spoke to the fathers. Fathers. Individuals. Read for me verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. In these last days... We hear him in his son. So in the last days, he has spoken to us in his son. In the Old Testament, he speaks to individuals. In these last days, in his son. Glory to God. That's why prophecy is not the ultimate. And that is not to downplay prophecy. And I'm talking about genuine prophecy. I'm not talking about arranged prophecy. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, calculated prophecy. I'm talking about genuine Holy Ghost inspired prophecy. It's not the ultimate. The ultimate is the scriptures that's the ultimate it's called a more sure word of prophecy the bible is called the prophecy so when i am teaching the word what am i bringing to you prophecy the problem is religion has cheated a lot of us because for you it is not prophecy until somebody does blah, 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 blah. No prophecy is as profound as the teaching and preaching of God's word. In the New Testament, prophets don't direct us. No. Prophets don't direct us. In the New Testament. Why? We are not outside in people. We are inside out people. The Old Testament prophets are different from New Testament prophets. Because the Old Testament people didn't carry God. So they needed prophets and seers to direct them and show them things. In the New Testament, it's a different ball game. Why? God lives inside you. You carry God. You don't need a prophet to tell you where to go. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
so what do prophets do when they prophesy sometimes when they prophesy they prophesy to you a confirmation of what god has already told you in your insight they just bring confirmation and affirmations and even if they speak things that you are not aware of there will be a witness there will be a witness because the holy ghost must have been talking to you about it but you were too busy to take note and when they brought it to your attention bam a magnetic confirmation takes place had spoken to us in his son in his son in his son so jesus is the word of god look at this hebrews 1 1 amplified in many separate revelations each of which sets forth a portion of the truth and in different ways god spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the spirit he spoke of old to our forefathers in different revelations each of which set forth a portion a portion so the old testament because it was a pattern of redemption it was just portions these portions of truth put together climaxed in a person who is the embodiment of truth i am the way the truth and the life so jesus is the embodiment of all truth there is no truth outside jesus but the old testament it was portion portion when you put all the portion together it climaxes in a person his name is jesus so jesus is the climax of revelation here's the climax is the end of all truth he's called the true god this is life eternal that they may know you the only true god he's the embodiment of truth it is truth because that's what he says what makes it truth is because that's what the truth has said the yardstick for measuring truth is jesus that's the yardstick so if the devil tells you you're sick take it and weigh it in light of truth when you bring that statement to where truth is you will see that that statement is a rebellion against christ satan wants to plant a rebellion in your mind against the knowledge of christ what is the knowledge of christ by his stripes you were healed so when the devil is contradicting what the truth has said what do you do you cast down imagination you bring every thought on that subjection to obey truth who is truth jesus god does not react god does not react so listen carefully as i round up are you blessed tonight grace is god's sovereignty it is god's sovereign choice and jesus is the grace of god personified let me close <laughs> you know what i'm about to say i hear some people are saying the problem with this grace preaching is that the grace preachers are not checking the excesses which move of god did he have excesses mm. which one even till today the holiness movement still have excesses they tell you not to wear a ring they tell you not to wear clothes that 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 are fanciful they tell women to dress like grandmothers and they call it holiness holiness is not ugly it is not the uglification of holiness it is the beauty of holiness Talk to me. Come on. 
Which move does not have excesses? Even the faith movement have their own excesses. They've been around for years. And they have not checked their own. And they are saying grace people should check excesses. Who should check excesses first? You want to do the work of the Holy Ghost? You want to do the work of the Holy Ghost? Nobody can clean this thing up. But as we behold him as in a mirror, we are changed as by the Spirit. Leave the Holy Ghost. He will do his job. Mind your business. You cannot clean up for the Holy Ghost. You cannot do his job. When you embrace grace, embrace it and run with it. Run with it. Adjustment will happen around the road. Adjustment will be happening because nobody gets it perfect day one. But as we behold his glory, as in a mirror, we are changed from glory to glory. My job here is to keep bringing the mirror. I keep bringing the mirror. I keep bringing the mirror. And every service you come, you look at the mirror. When you look at the mirror, you adjust. Tomorrow you look at the mirror, you adjust. Another tomorrow, you adjust. So our job in the church is to show you the mirror. Who is the mirror? Jesus! Stand on your feet. Let me close this service. Tell somebody, leave us alone. They say we have excesses. Who does he have excesses? Who does he have excesses? Are you the Holy Ghost? Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Did you die for us? You want to do Holy Ghost work? You want to take over from the Holy Ghost? Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. I will give you another comforter. Even the spirit of truth, when he is come, he will abide in you. He will guide you into all truth. You may miss it today, but he's still guiding. He will never leave you. Even when he guides you and you stumble, he will stand there and help you stand up. He will bring you back on the road. Let nobody do Holy Ghost work. Leave us alone! And if you have anything to tell us, show us Jesus. Just show us Jesus and keep quiet. You cannot do the job of the Holy Ghost. Are you here? Yeah. Leave that in. He said, Grace preachers are giving people license to sin. Is there any move where people are not seeing him? Wait, talk to me. Is there any move where people are not seeing him? Even inside the holiness, so called holiness churches, sin is boku boku. Is it because they are experts in pretending? Leave that in. Leave Jesus to do his work. Peter said, Why put on them a greater yoke? Why put on them a greater yoke? Which neither we nor our fathers could keep the, the fathers of the law accepted in the scripture with reference that all of them we are hypocrites no wonder jesus kept calling them white was sepulchre he kept calling them brood of vipers he said outside they are clean inside the is is, is dead men's bones uh, i want to close because if I move more now, we won't close. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. And if you have anything to contribute, show us Jesus. Did you hear what I said? If they have anything to contribute, show us Jesus and shut up. Jesus is more than enough. Jesus said, I will present to myself a church without spot leave him alone he has never failed before he will not fail this time around we may have our mistakes we may have our shortcomings leave us alone if you want to help us show us jesus get serious get serious get serious get serious Get serious! Get serious! Get serious! Help me shout it! Leave us alone! If you want to help us, show us Jesus! It's more than enough.
Enga bo jakelere ba Hila ma 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 Hora na ga 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 Hele barakata na ga 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 Hey But we see Jesus We see Jesus The perfecter of our salvation We see Jesus The auto and finisher of our faith We see Jesus the sanctifier of our lives but he that sanctify and they that are sanctified are all of one for which cause with all our mistakes and excesses he's not ashamed to call us brothers leave us alone if you want to help us show us jesus Mronang and Groshanga, Hulana Menge, Holaneka, 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 Holaneka. If you want to help us, show us Jesus. Jesus, lift your right hands, I prophesy over this house. From this day, enjoy the fullness of grace. From this day, enjoy the abundance of grace. From this day, enjoy the fullness of grace. From this night, enjoy the abundance of grace. And I decree over you, as you keep seeing Jesus, you will manifest his glory on the earth. You will manifest his glory on the earth. You will never see shame. You will never see embarrassment. You are called to glory. Therefore, this glory will manifest in Jesus' precious name. If that amen is a final amen, let it slap religion on the head. Leave us alone! If you want to help us, show us Jesus! Woo! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. Please don't adjust yourself and don't go away. Just stay with me patiently. You know, the word of God comes to give us light and the entrance of his life, of his word, give it light. And that light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. The word of God is so powerful. It can totally reshape the totality of your life. And that's why it's good to pay attention, to pay heed to the word of his grace. For those of you that have been following my teaching, you don't belong to any local assembly.